The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. So I just finished up this set of nesting tables. Now nesting tables are kind of cool because it gives you two design opportunities. One is when the tables are nested together, if you can get them to do something visually interesting, in this case we've got sort of like a circle within a circle thing going on, um, there's one opportunity, but you also of course have the opportunity to make each one its own interesting standalone design when the two are apart. So this was definitely a design challenge for me and I got some help from friends who are really good at designing things. So Brian Benham and John Funk, thank you so much for your assistance on this project. Um, but I wanna show you how I made these, so let's get to it. Let's start by making the larger walnut rings. I'll cut some walnut into eight mitered segments at 22 and a half degrees. Those pieces are then glued together with epoxy. Once dry, I clean up one face with a sanding block. The segmented ring is then attached to a plywood backer. The double stick tape is pressure sensitive, so I'll use some clamps to make sure it's attached really well. Now I cut the whole assembly into a rough circle and then attach a face plate for the lathe. At the lathe, I'll true up the outside of the ring first. I'm really not a skilled turner, so carbide tools give me the best shot at success at the lathe. Now I can start truing up the inside of the ring, bringing it to its final diameter. I'll carefully release the ring from the mounting plate and then attach it to another piece of ply that will allow me to resaw the ring in half at the bandsaw. Now I've got two perfect copies of the larger ring. For the smaller ring, I'm gonna use a routing template method just for the sake of showing something different. The router bit will not be happy removing so much stock, so I'll cut the outside and then use a rasp to remove the excess from the inside. And now I can use a pattern bit to trim the ring to final size. I'll have to do it in two passes. The smaller ring also gets a resaw to create two identical rings. The larger ring needs a dado through the center, so I'll use another piece of plywood with double stick tape to safely make the cuts at the table saw. The smaller ring gets two dados. The side designs have some skinny rails and styles, so I'll cut those down to size and sneak up on the fit with a hand plane. I can then cut a dado in the walnut rail, which also accepts one of those skinny styles. I'll change gears now and work on the white oak legs and rails. I was careful to select a rift sawn grain for the best uniformity. Each leg gets quarter inch mortises for the rails. Now, a router would work here too, but I just decided to give the hollow chisel mortiser a little workout. The legs receive a little bit of shaping on the outside faces, so I'll trace the shape and do a two-part cut at the bandsaw. Using the template, I'll flush trim the legs to final shape. Now we'll work on the rails. Each piece is milled up and cut to length. And then we can make the tenons. The blade is buried in a sacrificial fence, allowing me to cut right up to the edge of the tenon. And some of the tenons inevitably are a little bit snug, so I'll give them a pass or two with the shoulder plane and they'll fit perfectly. Two of our top rails will have a decorative shape that rises above the base of the table. Those are cut at the bandsaw and sanded smooth at the workbench. Now let's dry assemble. Hey, it's a table! Now that I have the side framework in place, I can go back to the decorative side designs, cutting my parts to length and adding the little baby tenons where needed. With the tenons cut, I can transfer their locations to the rails in order to make my remaining mortises. You can see how it's important to establish a work order where we go back and forth in a logical progression, letting the project dictate the final joinery locations. And I quickly double check my work with another dry assembly. 
All the base parts are now scraped and sanded in preparation for the glue up. For the rings, I'll give them an additional bullnose profile. I'll also add some chamfers here and there to ease the edges and give the piece a more refined look. Next, I'll countersink and drill for screws up through the decorative rails. Those will hold our tops in place. And now we can glue up the base. Type Bond Extend is a really good choice when you want a little bit of extra working time during a glue up, and who doesn't? There's really nothing worse than working on something for days or weeks only to screw it up during the glue up. To make the tops, I'll start with a couple of walnut panels. Once trimmed the size, I'll add a bevel to two sides. The bevel is actually a slight curve, so I'll use a hand plane to shape it. This lift will make the top appear just a little bit thinner while also giving a neat visual detail. Time for some finish. As you might have guessed, I'll be using my new favorite kind of finish, hard wax oil. Now I'll drive some screws into the tops. These tables are pretty darn sturdy considering their delicate appearance, but since they're meant as side tables or occasional tables, I wouldn't recommend dancing on top of them or trying to ram your head through the side. You probably can. If you like what you see and you want more detail, head over to the Wood Whisperer Guild for the full series of videos and a complete set of plans. Thanks for watching.